was impatiently waiting to start this video because as relaxing as I wanted this video to be for you, my neighbor was outside leaf blowing with his battery powered leaf blower and I was like, Ree! <laughs> but now the world has silenced. But let's jump into this. This is one of my very favorite rooms in our home. And I think, I don't know, I, th I have favorites throughout the season. I think they kind of change, but this room for me this time of year is especially beautiful because the days are shorter and so the light that streams through the windows in the afternoons is just so beautiful and still and calm and it really just sets the tone for the entire vibe. I think almost everything in this space, minus a few accessories and the draperies, I did buy those brand new, uh, but everything else is thrifted in here. Uh, I love to go anywhere, as you know, from garage sales, Goodwill shopping, flea markets, estate sales. This is very much a collected room and it's pretty funny when I change throughout the seasons because I will put all the decor here on the dining room table and it looks like a really good estate sale. And I was thinking, I was like, wow, almost everything did come from an estate sale in here. So no wonder. <laughs> I love especially to collect vintage linens. They are so beautiful. And just like the the fabrics and the textures and these beautiful prints you honestly don't see anymore i think are just so so special this beautiful runner down the center of the table here i think is one of my oldest pieces and this is where i learned the word bullion fringe this one has a really unique fringe on it i've never seen anything like this before but it has a, a metal bullion fringe. These are all metal little spirals. So it was definitely a handmade piece. And, and yeah, it feels ancient. Like when you pick this thing up and touch it, you can feel how old it is. So I'm always really, really careful when I do bring this out and decorate with it. I love decorating with free items anytime I can possibly do that. So you'll find me a lot in my videos, either <laughs> borrowing from my mom or stealing from other rooms or finding things outside that I can get for free like flowers. You might remember in the summer months, my dad and I were out there pruning my limelight hydrangeas and we got so many blooms on them this year. If you, if you want to incorporate a new plant into your garden, see if you're in the zone of a limelight hydrangea. You can look up the zone where you live just by a quick Google of, you know, gardening zones. It basically tells you like the temperature zone um, where plants will be healthy and happy. Um, but here in Oregon, and especially in my yard, these limelights love it here. I, I prune them down, uh, as you saw, we really hack them down low every year this, this time of year during the fall. And then I just fertilize them once a year and we get so many flowers, it's insane. So I did dry a ton of them. I'm probably gonna save some of these too. I was thinking about poking them in my Christmas tree this year for a different look. And um, I especially love using them during the fall months like this. And I thought this year, I wanna do a really pretty table runner down the center of the table. What's really wonderful about the limelight hydrangeas is that you don't need to do any kind of preservation. You don't have to spray them with hairspray. You don't have to hang them upside down or do anything special. You basically just cut them and you put them in a basket or a dry, or a dry vase with no water and they will preserve just like they are. They're really neat flowers. Something that I love, and I think we all do, 
our candles. Oh my gosh. I looked at my candle cupboard and I was like, you do not need to buy another scented candle this year. It's getting out of control. <laughs> but what I'm trying to do honestly is like enjoy and burn the ones that I have. I, I know you're like me. We'll have our like special candle. You have like some expensive one that someone gifted you or you splurged on and you're like, don't want to burn it because it's your special candle. But it's like, how dumb is that? Like get it out and enjoy it. So I've been trying to do that myself this year. Um, but one of the candles that I really love using here on my dining room table are Luminera candles. And I'm slowly replacing, especially the tapered ones throughout my home. So if you love to use antiques and vintage pieces in your home, but you're afraid to get wax on them, especially like these antique linens, things can drip on tablecloths. I highly recommend looking into these really cool battery operated candles. What I think is really neat, and I just realized it because I got this new color this season, but the new tapered ones that Luminera came out with, they have a timer on them like the big ones do. So I set them on timers all around my house and you can set them for a three hour timer and then they all just turn on and off at whatever time you select. It's pretty cool. I think one of my most seasonless things that I've incorporated here into this room are my cabbage dishes. And I use these in the spring, I use them in the summer, I use them in the fall. I like, who would have, who would have thought a vegetable plate could take you all throughout the year? But I just think they're so cute, especially in the summertime, I like to bring them outside for our garden table. But I thought, you know, they look really pretty with this soft kind of yummy muted pink. And I mixed a little bit of, um, a little bit of a bohemian look here, I guess, with this like woven, grassy placemat. Something that I've been trying to work on is my napkin folding game. And like, honestly, today I was drawing blank, so I just rolled these in a roll. But if you don't have any napkin rings, so easy, so inexpensive to just use a piece of twine. And I honestly think that this twine looks really really cute for fall i think it adds a nice touch of warmth and like a harvest feel to the space and i also love that if you're decorating with antiques you know they can feel kind of stuffy i think sometimes and uptight i feel like people are afraid to use your things if you have guests over and you're using antiques but if you kind of mix them with things that aren't so uptight and a bit more casual it makes the thing feel more welcome to. Oh, I have never shared this with you. So one of my neighbors was this really cool guy. He's recently passed away, but he was an artist and an antique collector, and just like a wealth of knowledge and a really fun guy to be around. I was really lucky and he invited my cousin and I to his storage unit that was full of antiques. So I think this was like last fall we went and I really wanted to share this with you because this was like a really fun thing for us to get down and dig. So I'm going to take a break from the relaxing ambiance <laughs> of this video and we're going to go digging in a storage unit real quick. All right, so I'm back at it again, looking at rugs, helping my cousin pick some out. And then I also found a runner that I like. Um, this is one that she's going to look at here and has pretty like pink edging. Isn't that gorgeous? And then check out this one has animals. Look at the little horns. It's like a deer or an elk or something. Colors are so pretty. And this one with the coral. Beautiful colors. These are the two that I'm looking at. This one's kind of a um, pretty kind of coral and pink and it has roses in the center. And then this runner. Didn't know I needed it till I saw it. But I really like this one. We have that red one at our entry and I don't really like think the colors go that well because we have lots of peach 
and kind of like corally colors and blues in the house. And I really like this one. So I'm looking at those two right now, but we are still digging because there's tons of them in here. I think she was looking at this one too. Of course the one she wants is on the bottom, but it's gonna be worth oh it. Okay. Look at the colors. Okay. Oh my God. She wants it. I can't even get it to move. I'm sorry. The colors are everywhere. Hang on, man. There's a, How big is it? It's a, like a massive eight by ten or something. Oh, there Ooh. we go. Okay. Oh, like that's rolled in half. That's even bigger. It's gonna be a good one. Wow. Wait till he comes down. Okay, you coming? Did you drop it. Okay. It's all gonna be worth it. It's a big one. Yeah. We are trying our best here. This is just so big and heavy. So I need to move over this. Okay. Okay. Over here. Yeah, we have more room over there. Oh, buddy, it's all gonna be worth it, you guys. Wow. Oh, oh, Oh my gosh, it's going to be glorious. Dude, are you kidding me? <laughs> wow. We don't know yet. Oh, lordy. I forgot about that one. <laughs> wow. The colors are phenomenal. It says Ahar, 910 by 1210. Beautiful. Yeah, that's like golds. Didn't you say your couch is yeah. golds? Golds and greens. And then I have this like, I have this dark plum like grass cloth. That's the one. Yeah. Okay, so let's make a deal. Check out these chairs. I don't have a spot for them, but they're so pretty. Okay. Look at the carvings. I even like the upholstery, like with the roses. So beautiful. It's the um, ladies and gentlemen's chair. I'm probably gonna get this plant stand here. It's really cool. It has a little bit of damage on it, but I could always rotate that to a back wall, just depending, you know, of course on price and stuff. But he said this is an older one and has little hooves for feet. I just thought that was really neat. I, I really love figural stuff and I'm trying to work on my indoor plant skills. I wish I had room for these chairs though, cause I'm sure they'd sell them to me for a great price. I just, I don't have a spot for them. If we had like a formal sitting room, I would really be interested. They're so pretty. I think my cousin's gonna get this one, that one, and then she's still unearthing that huge one. Guess who I got in here? He's right there. <laughs> I'm actually driving from the back seat because. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. This one's like 20 feet, he says. Um, from the 30s or 40s and it's all silk we're hoping that this will fit in the living room yeah. and then <laughs> yeah hoping, hoping. Yeah. <laughs> if not we'll have to bring it back so i don't know what we'll do and then this one for a future cabin we haven't even built yet <laughs> we like to plan ahead you know <laughs> this one i i really wanted to get an antique rug um possibly for our dining room I don't know, that just, this one just like spoke to me. So I really wanna see how this looks in there. Our cousin found all of these beautiful rugs that she incorporated into her Victorian house. She actually owns one on the other side of town. So she was really, really pumped to be able to add some really cool vintage, like true vintage rugs to her space. I really think that in a home, like a rug, literally is like the foundation and sets the tone for your space. And this rug, like, this is where I grabbed all of the colors from for our room. This was a new vintage rug. Like it had the old price tags on it still when I bought it, but it was old, if you know what I mean. Um, but it's got the peachy tones in here, the ivories, the golds, and the really beautiful grounding dark navy color that I kind of pulled um, with the drapes all around the room. These just added like a whole bunch of drama. And I know people are going to come at me right now for how I hung these curtains. I know there are like rules with curtain rods, but I was not in the mood for it. <laughs> but we just, we have really beautiful um, moldings in our, in our home and especially around the windows and stuff. And 
I didn't want to cover that up with draperies and I thought you know what I'm just gonna hang them however I want to and I think if you're decorating your own house like you should do whatever you want to and don't be all bothered and and uh, feel pressure to mind anybody else's rules it's your house <laughs> This space has really changed over time. When we first moved in here, um, this dining room was so blank and I looked back at pictures and I'm like, wow, there was really like no style and nothing happening in there yet. And at the time, it was, it was a really exciting time. But Fifi O'Neill, she had a magazine called Romantic Country and my husband and I were featured in there and our home was and it was, oh my gosh, I saw her post something on Instagram looking for people in Oregon and Washington to feature. And I hopped on it so fast. I'm like, I, I want to be one of the ones she chooses, you know? And I really wish that she could come back here and reshoot our home because it looks so different from when we first moved in. Yeah, I think we were only in here maybe like three or four months. So I hardly knew how I wanted each room to feel yet, you know, but I just, I couldn't pass up that opportunity. And it was a really, really neat experience. Something that's kind of funny though, with um, decorating, I guess, styling for magazines. And you might notice this when you, <laughs> when you start to look closely, but uh, things aren't exactly how people live every day. Like when we would style things, um, Fifi would push things really close together. So that way they, they would all fit into a frame. So if you were to think of like a coffee table in front of the couch, the coffee table would be pushed up like this close in front of the couch. So there'd be like no room to walk around it. But that captured all of like the accessories and the table and the couch and everything in one shot. So that was kind of a funny little thing, but it was also a trick that I learned, especially if you're gonna be like photographing in your own home and you want to start a YouTube channel or take pictures for your Instagram, that kind of crowded effect to capture the frame is actually a funny little magazine trick that I learned. <laughs> These chairs I got at a local consignment shop years ago and I recovered them and that's such a great way if you want to kind of like revamp your space is just do a simple upholstery on your dining room chairs. One of my favorite places to look for upholstery fabric is Goodwill. And you'll want to kind of think outside the box a little bit when you're doing this. But if you look at things like tablecloths and especially draperies, a lot of them are made of that really nice, thick upholstery type material. And you're going to pay a lot less than you would going to a fabric store. Sometimes even our Goodwill will get like bolts of fabric. So you might really luck out and get true upholstery fabric. But it's a really quick and easy way um, to kind of incorporate a different color into your space without adding a lot of money or spending much time on it. The chandelier above the table, oh my gosh, when I told Pete that I got this at a garage sale, I don't think he had any clue how big this thing was going to be. But um, yeah, she's massive and I think it's probably about a 200 pound chandelier. So we did have our electrician come over and help hang this one. We mounted it with a big hook up there too. So it'd have some extra support. I was trying to thrift those little candlestick chandelier shades. I think they're called candlestick shades. If you wanna kind of refresh one of the light fixtures in your home, this is such a great way to do it just by changing out the light shade. So I went on Poshmark and I actually thrifted all of these beautiful dark burgundy silk shades. And this room looks so pretty at night when we flick the light on and it just has this really like warm, dramatic glow on the table. I think it was a really good move just to kind of switch it from the bright white shades that were on there to kind of a more rich and moody kind of color. I was thinking about old things in this room and I think one of the, the oldest things, and, it, and by oldest I mean like the longest thing that I've had in this room is probably our dining room table itself. It's not something that's like very fancy by any means, but it's a solid table and it's so functional. It has self-storing leaves inside of it. So when we do have family over or we have some kind of a holiday party, I can pull out that leaf that's in the middle of the table and really expand it for more of a buffet, like serving length if I want to. Uh, but when I first got this, I think we paid like a hundred bucks for it on, 
on Craigslist and this little boy at the time um, took a ballpoint pen and really like gouged the top of this thing. So I took it all down. I sanded and sanded my heart out on this and put all these different coats of very thin finish to get the um, glossy finish back on and remove those scratches and all the damage of the surface. But it's a beautiful piece. I think it's like from the 1940s and we've just had it forever and it fits our space really well. I love mixing romance with like a little bit of gothic stuff and if you've seen my mom's room tour uh, you can see why I like doing that <laughs> she likes doing it that too uh, but she has a, a darker version of interior design <laughs> than I do but I love I guess I love like the juxtaposition of like a like a romantic um, whimsical thing mixed with something gothic I feel like that it kind of like it's like a weird mixture that like works really well together. And I love doing that here in my home. But this piece here was like a really weird estate sale find. And I mean weird because nobody really knows what this is. I've been told it's an incense burner. Uh, I've been told it's just a vase. I don't know. It has different holes around it on the sides where it looks like some pieces are missing. And from what I could find online, I think it had dragons all the way around, or at least two of them. But now, unfortunately, this piece only has one of the dragons left, but it's so beautiful. Um, I got this at a, at a, Vic, a Victorian estate sale. This thing was, was amazing. I, I think it's bronze and it's definitely Art Nouveau. It's got a botanical look to it with like this lotus blossom type bowl to it. But I've also incorporated some of my dried hydrangeas over here. And then I, these ostrich plumes, oh my goodness, these are so old. I bought a, a vintage flapper dress at a sale once and these were pinned on there with the headpiece of the actual flapper dress. It was like this 1920s dress and these ostrich plumes were, were pinned on there. And I, I kept them and I, I poked them in vases and kind of used them in my Christmas decor too. Oh, the mantle lusters that gave me so much anxiety. These are so beautiful to me. But mantle lusters, come to find out, are something that was very like quintessential Victorian. Like Victorian homes, you typically have these on their mantles. And I've always seen these in magazines and in the background of, you know, um, old Hollywood movies. And they just look so beautiful and dramatic. And I knew that I wanted some for our home and I specifically wanted pink. You know, why not make it more difficult? But I was, like scrolling the internet forever to find ones that were actually affordable. I got a screaming deal on these at $150 for the pair, which is just unreal. But I got these on Poshmark of all places. You can find antiques on there, who knew? Um, but they have these really big, beautiful etched crystals on them and the gold gilding. These are just phenomenal. I do need to put my uh, battery candles in here though. I have them lined with tin foil right now, so I don't get them dirty or anything, but uh, these are just so pretty and they were such a find. They came all the way from Florida to Oregon. You can imagine my anxiety during the shipment time. <laughs> One of my tricks for kind of being a bit maximal with my pieces <laughs> is choosing a color palette. If you like to decorate with antiques and go treasure hunting, like sometimes it's really hard to pass by something when you're like, oh my gosh, this thing's really cool. But then you might end up with a, like a jumbled kind of eclectic look that can be a bit overwhelming sometimes. But if you can kind of hone in these pieces and pick a color palette, they all kind of marry and like jive really well together. And that's kind of what I've done in this room. And when I want to refresh this room, rather than going out and buying different pieces, I will grab and pull um, with my radar on. So I will go around my bedroom, say, and find pieces that are like pink or navies and kind of and pick and pull that way and incorporate them back into my space. So that's kind of a quick, easy little trick for you if you're kind of wanting to refresh or um, add a cohesiveness to your space. Our big pieces in this space came from my favorite auction house. Dale has since retired. I really miss going there. That going to auctions is like, 
it's a great opportunity to learn about pieces. Whether you want to buy the item or not, you can see what the going rate is, what other people in your community value something at. And you can also learn a lot about a piece, how to identify a true antique or tell it from something that is a reproduction and just literally be hands on. You can touch these pieces and see them and learn about them. When I heard that my auctioneer was going to retire, I told Pete, I was like, we, we got to go to his barn and pick out some pieces because we finally had the home to be able to do that. And so Pete picked out our buffet and then also um, the piece behind me here. This is an old Spanish piece, I was told, uh, but the carvings on it are just beautiful and that warmth of the wood I love. You will never, you will never mark my words. You'll never catch me painting one of these antiques in here. Um, if something is like a real true antique and is made of quality materials and this has lasted this long, um, I just, I don't condone the paintbrush. <laughs> put the paintbrush down. I know that chalk painting everything was so in and trendy for a time and I, I am guilty of that as well. I have chalk painted some things that I probably should not have and looking back in retrospect I, I wish that I would have left them as is. Something that I like to do with my antique pieces because they are old, they can get kind of dried out. I like to uh, oil them and revive them with Howard's orange oil. You probably have seen that stuff in antique shops. Not only does it smell amazing, a bottle is gonna last you like three years and it just brings back that luster and warmth of the wood and helps kind of preserve these antiques for many more years to come. The paint color in this room is very odd, I think. It's a peach color, but when the sun moves or we have cloudy days, it will change color. And I honestly think that is like the coolest thing because I get more paint colors in one that way, right? <laughs> but when I, when I first had a vision for this space, I, I had the rug and I was like, okay, I wanna pull one of these colors out of here. And I wanted it to have a peachy tone, but I also wanted it to feel um, like a bit earthy and aged and, and, and just feel age appropriate, I guess, for our house. I didn't want it to feel pink. I think I swatched like five different colors, some colors that are very, very trendy and popular. You probably heard of pink gourd and setting plaster. These are like really common colors that people use in interior design magazines. And a lot of people I've seen on Instagram use that beautiful color too. So I was like, oh, I, I wanna try that. It's a beautiful color. I put it in here and swatched things and it looked awful. It looked like this dirty dirt. It looked like dirty dirt. And it just reminded me of how important that is to swatch colors. And as much as I love this color for our space, if you decide you wanna try this, do get a sample of it. Take the time to get a sample and see if it works for your space. <laughs> it's, paint is just, it's not one size fits all. And I even played with different tones of tinting. That's also an option I found out that you can do with paint. You can ask for like a 20% tint or a 30% and it kind of adds more saturation to the tone. So I played with things like that too, but I, as, as exciting as it is to have some inspiration and redecorate your space, just slow down, step back a little bit and get your paint samples. You're gonna thank me later. <laughs> you know, I think I'm gonna make something easy tonight for dinner. I've really been craving this roasted red pepper soup that I love to make, it's so easy to do. Or maybe I'll do something in the crock pot. 
I don't know, that always smells so good. You know, that, that smell of something stewing all day in your house. Oh my gosh. Um, but one of my dreams to do this year is to have a dinner entirely by candlelight. So I want to turn all the lights off turn on my candles, light the fire. We finally got our chimney swept this year and we've never lit a fire in this fireplace. So that's one of my goals this year to do. So I hope this season brings some inspiration, but most of all, restoration for you. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you for being subscribed to my channel and I'll see you in the next video.